my dear friend Louisa Heinzel, little Effie, our craft buddy, and I would like to welcome you to the official start of Defemoramber 2023. Whoop whoop! <laughs> Louisa and I are thrilled to host our series Defemoramber for the third year. This series focuses on creating fun ephemera in December. Louisa and I will be posting four videos each week from December 4th to December 28th, totaling 16 videos where we make ephemera for our journals. And as always, we'll have goodies, freebies, and a giveaway mixed into our videos. What is it, Effie? He keeps bugging me. Oh, okay. He wants me to tell you about last night. So last night I heard strange noises coming from my craft room and this morning I found this little scroll in my planner. Effie said he wanted me to read it out loud. So here we go. So I'm going to unravel this. By the way, Effie, where did you get this beautiful ribbon from? Is that from my closet? <laughs> He's very silent at the moment. So here's the text. Wow, that's quite a letter, Effie. So, dear Barbara, I couldn't contain my excitement until December 4th. I knew it. So I decided to kickstart a little prompt challenge for you and Louisa. For this challenge, I've selected two prompts for both of you to work on. However, I've added a twist to make it a bit more challenging. This is getting very interesting. In this note, I'll reveal the first prompt that will be the same for both of you. But here's the catch. You won't discover the second prompt until December 31st. Oh, wow, that's a long, that's four weeks away. This way, you'll have to combine these prompts creatively to complete your ephemera projects. So here are your instructions. Create a door and send it to Louise. <laughs> and Louise will do the same for you. Then on December 31st, you'll each receive a different second prompt to add the final touches to your ephemera. Get ready for some crafting fun with my challenge. Hugs, Effie. <laughs> Effie, he's such a sneaky little guy. <laughs> I just knew he had something up his sleeve when I was putting together the little folder for the prompt list. By the way, if you've missed any of the Defemor Emperor countdown videos, you can find those linked below this video in a playlist. I think this challenge is such a fun idea. So we're going to create a freebie for you with a more general version of Effie's letter so that you can download it yourself. You can read the instructions again and you can participate as well. So that means we'll be creating a door together today and on December 31st, we'll see what else Effie comes up with. So let's make a door. <laughs> This should be fun. I took a few moments to think about how I could do this and I want the elements to be a bit raised. So I want this door to have a bit of dimension. So I have here a template of an A5 paper, which is the paper that Louisa is using in her journal. So that helps me decide on the dimensions of the door. So I have a piece of cardboard here not too thick, not too thin. I think it should be fine to layer two or three pieces on top of each other. So now I have to decide on the dimensions of the door. I have to leave some room for the holes. So I have to consider those. So we'll start about here. That should give her enough space on the page. Then I'll have it go till about here. And then for the height, we'll have it until about here. So that's the first piece I'm going to cut. And I want this door to open in the middle. So I need to figure out where half is and then cut that in half. So I have the middle here.
Let me quickly give you the measurements of this piece because I know some of you will want to know. So in inches, we have a length of almost seven and a half. In centimeters, it's 18.8. .8. And the width is in inches, a little over four and a half and centimeters, 11 and a half. So these are my two door halves and they will open like that. Now I want to decorate them some more. So I want to add some more elements. So I know I will want panel in the middle, about half the width of this. And then it should be a little less wide than my panel. So we'll say like that. So I'll cut two of those. So those will go approximately in the middle. Or maybe this doesn't have to be in the middle. Maybe we'll do it like this, a little off center. And then we'll have a big panel down here and a smaller one up there. So let's get the width first. So I actually want the same width as this piece. Isn't it fun when you get to be an architect as a junk journaler? <laughs> we can incorporate every skill into junk journaling. <laughs> Okay, so I want a panel up here, like that. And then I want one down here, like that. Okay, so we have those and we need the same two again for this side. One and two. I didn't have enough of the same cardboard, so I just took another one and I cut panels that are again a little bit smaller than the ones we just added. Wait, this is cut completely crooked. Let me just fix that. Okay, that's better. And then we have these up here and we have these. So next we have to paint all of these parts. I'm going to use mostly this Hawaii, it's beautiful turquoise, and I'll mix in a little bit of fresh foliage, which is a light green. We'll put another coat on top, but this will be the first layer. This one doesn't sound so good when I shake it. I might have to use another one. Oh no, it's fine. I have to make sure to also get the edges. Look at me working with no gloves. <laughs> I'll mix in just a little bit of the green. Set that to dry and I'll just do that with all of my parts. Goodness. <laughs> so all of my pieces are painted and I have let them air dry. Little Effie here is being very quiet. He's not giving me any input whether this is good or bad or whether this is what he had imagined. He's just letting me do my thing. Now, of course, I want to give this a more vintage look. I don't know how to do this. I've never done it. I'm just thinking if I add a thin layer of something dark that I can hopefully either rub or sand away later, hopefully that will give me a vintage look. <laughs> so I have several options here. I have Distress Spray Stain Vintage Photo. I have Distress Oxide Reinker, you know, for the ink pads. And I have Distress Stain Ground Espresso in a dauber. I really don't know what the best solution is. Maybe I'll just first try this darker ground espresso. Now I know this is transparent. Maybe I should try it on a small piece first before I mess everything up. Let me just get some tweezers. Ooh, very, very dark. 
Okay, so this is water-based, meaning that I'm thinking if I dry this and then gently rub some off, that should work. So let me dry this. I zoomed you in a little bit. So I dried it now, it is super dark. And I have a baby wipe here, so I hope I can just rub it off partially without rubbing all of it off. So I want to be very, very gentle. So obviously it's it's coming off. I knew that would work. I didn't know how much would come off. So I guess this way you have the chance of playing with how dark do you actually want it. So if we compare these two, this definitely looks older. So I think that's a really good solution actually. That's what I'll just do for all of these. If you don't have any sprays or anything like I have, give it a try with acrylic paint and either sand some of it off afterwards. Maybe you have a chalk paint, that would be really nice. Also a chalk paint for this layer would have been really nice if I had one. Or you try wiping some of the paint off while it's still sort of wet. You'll just have to experiment just like I'm doing with what I have. So I'm just going to go ahead and put this over all of my pieces. I'll let them dry and then I'll just rub it off. This is actually quite easy. I know there are special pastes and whatnot, but let's try to see what happens with what we already have before we buy all the things. Again, don't forget the edges. I'm super happy with how these came out. I think they look really nice and vintage now. And I want to add some more accents on the edges. I'm going to use my Inca Gold, which is a fast drying metal gloss paint. And this is the color Gold Brown. So it's a very dark brown, almost looks bronze. You could use a wax or just acrylic paint or whatever you have. This is super dry, so I'm just going to add a little bit of water. And I think I will just do that with my fingers. Rub it so that I get a nice thick consistency. Again, I'll try it first with a small one. I'll just go along the edges and I want this to be messy, which is very easy to do. <laughs> I could not do it any other way, to be honest. So like that. And again, these will then have to dry. Doing this with a gloved finger makes it definitely more messy because I have less feeling than if I was just to use my hand. And also because it makes some wrinkles, it just kind of gets everywhere, which I like in this case. <laughs> so this Inca Gold by Viva dries really fast. So that is awesome. So now let's assemble our doors. If you are very patient, then I would suggest you leave your parts under books for a few hours or maybe even overnight. That way it'll be nice and flat. But I don't have time for such nonsense. <laughs> it would definitely be better. I like it. Wow, this looks really cool. Okay, one thing I want to do before I glue all this together is I wanted to add some door handles. I have these huge ring fasteners. You can find these on Amazon. Tim Holtz has them as well. And they're just brads, basically, with a ring that go through this part that you can just attach. And I think I want to add these. Oh, I see an issue right now because I thought I could add them underneath these two so that we wouldn't have the ends on the back. But I just see now that I can't because I obviously want the ring to hang like this. But that means that these are on the top and the bottom and they are too wide. And I don't think I want to cut them that short, or could I? Because I really don't want them sticking out on the back side. Hmm, maybe I should first see what they even look like. They might be too big. These come in different sizes. These are what I happen to have. 
I mean, it's kind of big, but I think it's fun. It's super bulky, of course. Oh my goodness, Louisa is going to kill me. <laughs> oh no, I didn't consider the bulk. That is crazy. So the only other ones I have are these tiny ones, and I think they're going to look ridiculous on our door. But of course, they would be a lot less bulky. Oh, this is a different color. Ah, they have different colors. Okay. Thankfully, I still have two with the same color. Actually, is not as ridiculous as I thought. And I think Louise will appreciate not having so much bulk. Oh, let's do it. I thought this would be fun, but Louise won't be happy. We want a happy Louise, right? <laughs> I think we can all agree on that. We could obviously leave them just as they are. They look totally fine. But I have something I want to try that I haven't tried yet. So I recently got this Distress Foundry Wax statue. So it's this kind of bronze. And I'm really curious to try this. So I think this might be a good opportunity. I think I'll just use my fingers. Apparently the very important thing about this is, so like the Michael Stains, you have to shake it up well. There is a ball in here. So first time opening this, let's just add a little bit here. Whoops. Oh my goodness. No, that was way too much. I'm not happy wasting so much because the first part was kind of thick and then it just came out really thin. So this time I actually will just take my finger. Oh, it's like a cream. And then I'm just going to add that. And then you have to heat it up and then it becomes permanent. And I think it also gets a little bit lighter from what I've seen. Mm -hmm. It's matte right now. So this is what it looks like before it's heated. It would probably be nice if it had a distressed effect. So maybe I should rub some of it off again. This dries super fast. So I would like to see some of the darker parts underneath. This is what it is. I will maybe add a little bit less. That's really hard <laughs> on this one. That's basically not really possible because this is quite liquid. Okay, and then I'll try to rub some of it off again. Okay, what do we do with this? I would really hate wasting this. Maybe if I'm quick, I could cut some die cuts and uh, maybe use those on the door. I just found these in my little basket where I keep my die cuts. So in order not to lose too much time, so this doesn't dry, I'll just add that. I also have these. I actually don't have that die cut, but I was able to cut these when I was at Maud's house in the Netherlands recently. Don't think I'll use it on the door, but at least then I have it and I didn't waste my paste or wax. So I also had this negative here of December. So I'll use my heat tool and we'll see how this changes. So I don't know if you were actually able to see the change because it was quite subtle. But they are nice and shiny now. And permanent. So that's pretty cool. And another nice feature is that it's really easy to get off your hands and probably everywhere else. So I've glued the top and bottom panels all down. I glued these just onto each other. And next, I'm going to attach these two ring fasteners to these panels. So I will mark where the middle is because otherwise I will mess this up. <laughs> then I'll just punch a small hole. And then I can attach these ring fasteners and I will have to cut down the legs because they are too long. They are not too long. So that's awesome. Actually looks like drawers, don't they? <laughs> I 
Okay, but before I glue these panels onto my door panels, I'm going to put something on the back here. Obviously, when you open the door, you will see the back. So I thought I would add some of this. This is a print from my Defamorember kit. This is background number five. And I printed this on matte photo paper. So the print quality is really nice. And I'm going to trace these two door panels. I think I'll do it like this. And I want them to have a seamless design. Oh wait, how does this work? Because when I open them, we're never going to see it together like that actually. You know what I mean? Because we won't see it ever closed from the back side. We'll see it open. Yeah, I don't know. I'll trace it and then I'll decide. Maybe I have to put them then the opposite way. I don't know. <laughs> so if we put this one here and this one here. How will that look when we open it up? Okay, if we switch it around, then it fits. I don't know that it matters because they're going to be quite far from each other. It's okay. <laughs> I'll just go with this. So I'll ink up the edges and glue those onto the back sides. Okay, these are inked up. There's unfortunately a bit of warping here because of course PVA glue, I was not thinking I shouldn't have used PVA glue, but it is what it is now. It's not so bad. So now on the front, I can add these two. I have to make sure this is straight before I glue that down. And then I'll just clamp that for a moment. While that is drying, I have another idea. You remember we have this shipping label freebie. Again, this is linked below. We have introduced this in one of our previous Defemember countdown videos. And I think it would be really sweet if we had Effie peeking through the slit of the door. We don't have a lot of space in between the crack because when we look at the A5 page size, remember we didn't have a lot of space. So if we put it like this we still need to leave space for the holes so we only have like this much like a centimeter but maybe that's enough to have Effie peeking through I think that would be really cute so I will start off by just cutting him out and I printed him on 200 GSM cardstock so that he's quite sturdy so I fussy cut him and I inked up his edges let's take these off So how much space do we really have? Think about this much. So now if we put him like this, <laughs> he's peeking out. How cute is that? So we would obviously not glue him on this part, just on this part. But I forgot one thing because of course, if we glue him on like this, this is what it looks like on the back, which is not nice. And what I should have done is before I cut him out, I should have glued this on the back side so this way he's kind of camouflaged from the back so now i have to trace him and cut him out a second time actually it makes more sense to glue him on like this and then to just cut him out again We could of course also have him picking out like this. Well, that will be Louise's decision because these two will be separate pieces. So she can either have him picking out like this or just in between the slit. That is then up to her. So now if we turn it around, you see this blends in a lot better. So let's glue him on. And then I also want to add something else here on the inside. 
panels. I want to add December. I would have wanted to add December, Amber, but it's just too long. <laughs> so I'm going to add December and 2023. So December like this, 2023. And these come from these two sets. You would actually only need this one. It has a number 665924 and it's called Alphanumeric Theory. It has the alphabet and the numbers in two different sizes. I also have this one, which is the one I always use in my planner, just because it's so practical to have all the right letters already together. This has the number 661178 and it's called Calendar Words Block. So they look like this. You get single letters, just as if you would do them separately, but it's just super convenient. So I'll glue these on off camera. That's not fun to watch. <laughs> I'll show you when I'm done. So that's what that looks like. I'm quite happy with it. It's not fun to glue these on, but it's worth the effort, I think. I love how Effie is completely camouflaged here. <laughs> so to finish this off, I want to add three more little pieces, <laughs> which are these here. So obviously I need to send Louisa a little dragonfly then a heart because she has a piece of my heart and of course a key because the door needs a key right obviously these are different colors so to make them all the same and to make them all look like this color hopefully i'm again going to use the foundry wax on these this time i'll try to be a little bit more careful and not have so much here and i'll use a brush this time not really staying on because this is not silver this is just plastic unfortunately but i don't have any other dragonfly charm as far as i know i don't know if this is going to work so after using my heat tool these two look great I obviously whoops i obviously still have to do the other side yeah they're too hot to touch the dragonfly yeah i mean it's better than this side maybe i'll have to do another coat i don't know Yep, the second coat did it, so that's good. So once that has cooled off, I can do the other side. Okay, both sides are done for all three charms, and I'm just going to clean my brush by wiping it on a baby wipe. Because it's wax, obviously, so I cannot rinse it with water. So I just broke my dragonfly. <laughs> you see the top here is missing where the loop was, because... I was clogged up from the wax and I just tried to stick my pokey tool in it to free it and it broke off. Good job. See, the only other dragonfly I have is this one and I really don't think this is Louise's taste and it also doesn't really fit with these two. I can't really put the foundry wax on it because that would also go over these little stones, which would look really bad. What to do? Maybe we just do the key and the heart. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. So I have this ball chain here. You can find these jewelry shops or even online. So they're called ball chains. And usually you get a long strain and then you just cut it to the size that you need. Then I need to attach jump rings on these. Okay, I added them onto the ball chain and now I need to put that through the ring. And I've added this closure here and that just then needs to go in there. Cute! But I am really sad about the dragonfly. Little Effie here just had a really sweet idea. He said, since I don't have a dragonfly, why don't I add some wooden letters, both of our initials, Louisa and Barbara, and I could use the same foundry wax on those to make them go with the rest of the charms. Thank you, Effie. I love that idea. You are so helpful. <laughs> So this stuff even works on wood. It's obviously not quite as shiny as on a smooth surface, but it works. And now they fit together with everything else. 
Since I cannot drill a hole through these, I'm just going to attach these with some embroidery thread. And since Louise loves a good green, <laughs> I'm going to use this one here. I think I'll do this like I would do it on a journal spine. So I'll put these two together, thread them through the ring. And then put the ends through the loop and then just tie these on, one on each end. I just make a double knot at the height that I want this to dangle from. The L is a little more tricky. I'll have to make it tight so that it doesn't come off. And then I'll cut these a little bit shorter, not too short. Louisa can always cut them down if she wants them shorter. So this needs to go to Louisa now. So I'm going to carefully wrap this first in some bubble wrap. Careful not to bend little Effie here. Effie is so excited that he's part of the door. He was not expecting that. Let's add some masking tape to close it. Masking tape, washi tape. <laughs> and I can put this in a sturdy envelope so that I'm sure it doesn't bend and ship that off to Louisa. <laughs> Don't forget to grab your prompt freebie and have fun with the first part of the prompt. S stay tuned on December 31st after all the other prompts are done. We'll make the second half of the prompt and I will open my package that I will have received from Louisa with her door. Editing Barbara here. I totally forgot. Didn't Effie say that Louisa is also making a door for me? Well, let's go check that out together. See you there. Mwah, mwah.